Welcome. Something a bit different today. I'm heading now to a place that I used to frequent quite a lot, particularly when there wasn't so many restrictions here on where you could camp. And it's one of the places that I've been mentioning of late that had been closed due to the foolish action of people not doing the, the right things. We used to come out here years ago as well in a um, in a boat with all our camp gear in, in the uh, in the back in, inside our boat. And what we used to do is park up here at the mouth of the river up here, and we used to go up. The, the river or down the river or so on and find a spot to camp on the on the banks and just do some fishing over the next four days or so again that's another place that was closed off uh, that that area was maintained by the Bunnaberg Kane authority mob and unfortunately too many people did a lot of bad things there and left a lot of rubbish and and fires and so on so uh, they, they were forced to close it because we used to take a different four-wheel drive track that you take just before you get to the uh, the beach and you come up to this this creek and it's just not too far from Mora Caravan Park there's these awesome little campsites free campsites we used to camp at nice grassy areas flat ground relatively easy to get to although you still needed a four wheel drive and it was awesome you just take a couple of steps out throw your crab pots out and you got your feed of crabs by the next day uh, just throw your line out you can catch your yabbies you just walk up the river a bit on a low tide catch your yabbies and you can throw a line out and the fishing's quite good there but unfortunately, that's one of the places that was closed over 20 years ago. So now they have their little area here with designated campsites. So you choose your campsites. So that's where we're going now. And according to my GPS, it's only 7.3 kilometers away. So I thought I'll let you guys come with me and see behind me. I've got my vehicle all packed up, ready to go. So where am I going? What's it called? Well, obviously it's near Bundaberg, so it's only about 40 k's north of where I live, so it's fairly close. And it's called Norval Park. It's number four, not sure where number five is. Let's go pull in and say hi to Stephen and Annie. Have a look who's here. How you going everyone? <laughs> hey Stephen. We're caught up again. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my campsite here. So I'm going to set up my, first I'm going to set up my tarp and I'll do a time lapse of that. <laughs>
go guys all set up so you can see how quick these are to set up so all I've done after I've set that up is I've uh, got the original iCamper mattresses in there this time and I'm using one of my air mattresses, self-inflating air mattresses so basically and of course the aero mesh condensation mat so what that does is stops the condensation build up inside the tent in particular under the mattress I found without that I was getting some condensation issues inside the eye camper but now I'm using the aero mesh uh, I've got no problems with that anymore and that only took a couple more minutes so that's basically all set up so something different that I've done I haven't done the other day I've got my sea gear matting out here so those if you got the sea gear matting they're perfect under the Drifter Stockton hexatarp so as you know I've got the large hexatarp this sea gear matting is a 6 by 3 meter I've owned this for years and I've always found it, it was a bit too big really for what I what I needed so it's not that often I ever took it with me and I usually only take it with me and I'm going to Fraser Island or somewhere it's got a lot of sand like that but now I'm going to start taking it with me because it's a perfect fit for my hexatarp you can see set up here I'll just move at the back here and I'll show you my camp set up and then we'll go have a look around on the beach here shortly so that's how my, how my camp is set up at the moment so back and right off to the bush, you can hear the kookaburras in the background, we've seen a lot of wildlife while we're here. So this is looking out the front of my campsite, if you're wondering I've got campsite number 5. You've got no problems fitting the setup like that. Now just across the road from me is Stephen and Annie. There's Stephen. <laughs> good, how are you? And uh, this is their setup. There's old dot two six one. Yes, dot two six one. One of the drifter off road trailers. Yeah, this was the first walk up hard top. That's right, it was too. The first walk up hard top. When they say walk up hard top, you notice my setup there has got the ladder. They got no ladder here. What she's going to demonstrate. <laughs> walk up here open up the door and get in bed that's it so that's why that's called a walk up hard top you can see the toilets there so let's just wander now you can just see there i don't know if you can see that that's where the ocean is so you're not too far away or probably 100 meters back so this is probably the day use area see there's a car park there it's probably come down for a fish so you can come here for a day and have a picnic they got a couple of tables here. So as you can see, there's no barbecues. And that's the campsite just there behind the day use area. And your two flushing toilets there, one for male, one female. Check this tree out, guys. Stephen was telling me about this tree uh, just before. And so reckons it'll make an awesome foreground for some nightscape photos, and I agree. So we're going to come here tonight and set the camera up somewhere around about here and see if we can get some photos with the, hopefully, maybe if we're lucky with the Milky Way in shot. As you can see, it's a four drive track there so you can still go down and drive on the beach and head up north. Nice spot up there. But you might remember me mentioning before about um, how people used to come in in here and camp used to be able to come in and camp all through there see all that there all these rocks have been put in place here mainly to stop the people from not obeying to the rules they used to come here and they used to pull the rocks out so they can get in and camp in here so what they've done is they put bigger rocks in what a shame look at this it's even not only, it's got to the extent guys, so not only can you not go camp there, you can't even walk through here, look at this. All these warning signs, no entry, private property, and believe me, they will prosecute here too. 
because they they got quite pissed off about the the way this place was left so they've even stopped you from even you can't even go for a walk down there so this is it this is all off boundary look at these three signs here just to make sure guys it wouldn't surprise me if there's a freaking security camera hidden in here somewhere so people used to come down here in caravans and camp here that was the last time i came here it was just chock a block full of caravans all the way down there it's a shame we can't go through there so i'm only here for one night so i got my little dji uh pocket camera out Yeah, but I don't know if you'll be able to hear me too well now. Standing right here now, it's like someone just put the aircon on. Because it was starting to get a bit warm and steamy and humid back then. But now standing out here, exposed to this nice sea breeze, it's quite amazing the difference it makes to the temperature. It feels like an aircon. You can see Steve over there, if you're wondering what he's doing. I don't know what it is with that spot there, but it's just a magic spot. Generally there's no mobile phone service here. But at that spot there, we're standing there, we're able to get two bars of 4G. And we're going for a little walk now. So as you can see, it's quite flat here. The wind has dropped down. Nice hard sand to walk on. Now I never ever used to camp along here when it was all open along here. I used to camp at a further spot, way way further down at the banks of the river up here. So you come up to the river here and you've got your Myra Caravan Park not too far up around the bend of that river there. Quite a fair bit of erosion here. As you can see over the years, probably the last time I came, these trees are probably all standing up happily with green, nice green leaves. You see how this has all been washed away now and there's quite a bit of a drop down there. <laughs> there you go guys, there's a little alley having a ball. We're heading back up the camp now, so I'll flick the camera around and let you have a look. All you guys out in YouTube land, come and join me for a little walk back to camp. So what we'll do, we'll keep we'll keep filming till we get back to camp to give you an indication how far it is to camp uh, from the beach. I'm gonna go put this rubbish up we found. Yeah, we found some rubbish on the beach. This uh, just got washed up. It's like it's been out there for a while. It's got barnacles and that on it, and some seashells on it. It's got garland on it. Probably off a container ship somewhere. That's what my guess is. So we go up here and walk between the toilet and the table. Day use area. I mean, check out these tables and chairs. <laughs> okay. Oh man. <laughs> not only, <laughs> not only have they put those big boulders in there. Mate, the table and chairs are made of freaking solid cement. So there's a water tank here, but that tank is not for you guys, that tank is for the toilet. So you have to come here with water. You don't even have to take the rubbish back home with you, you can leave the rubbish bin here, they've got a huge skip bin. And we're back at camp. So I hope you enjoyed that little walk that we're just down down the beach and show you a bit of Norville Park 
Uh, I might start doing a few more videos like this in the future if you're interested. Let me know if you're interested in videos like this. I'm only just using me little DJI pocket camera. So, not my real good camera, so hopefully the audio quality is good enough. The video should be good enough. Hey, welcome back guys. So, it's night time. I've got no idea what time it is. Uh, hopefully you can see me okay. I've got, you see it's got the little snow, solar puff. I forgot what they're called. Got one of these solar puff lights here. And a couple of lights here behind me. As you can see. So I'm cooking, cooking lunch now. I uh, sort of say tea. Uh, a bit later, a bit later the tea. I'm doing an omelette here. I'm not going to eat all this by the way, that's pretty big. I'll just have some leftover if any. And, and Stephen wants to try some. Uh, they're welcome to have a go, otherwise I'll just put it in the fridge and have leftover for tomorrow for lunch or whatever. It's an easy meal to cook on the little Origo stove. So you can see at the back here I've uh, put the the tarp actually Steve did, he Stephen put the tarp right down to the floor to help block a bit of wind and gives him a bit of privacy here so even with the wall right down you can see how much room I've got here if you're wondering what that noise is behind me that's Stephen setting up the Drifter Stockton fire what's it called? Fire Fire Surround Fire Surround so he's got the Peak fire pit so we're going to sit around a the fire there soon see how this this is almost ready to flip over. Just a quick easy meal today. Only staying overnight so I didn't want anything too elaborate. Just the Stockton fireplace around. Do you want me to show you how it folds up? Yeah. It's quick and easy so you just got these clips here. They just fold around there like that. Then pull these out. Folds down. That folds down. You got two clips on the side here you put in. Now this is light as buggery, but it's strong. And that's it. Got and it's got it's got the bag. Oh, it comes with the handle too. Yeah, Sweet. so you got a handle there you can carry it. Yeah, no, that's good. And, and it, it comes in a bag too. You can get a bag for it. I think they're making one. Okay, so they haven't got the bag out yet, yeah, but they're I think coming. Yeah, the canvas is just running, like they've got so many orders at yeah, the moment. Yeah, they've, they've been, I've heard that. But uh, yeah, like really light, like you can shove it sort of anywhere. Oh, excellent. But it goes up and just as quick. Just going to check this, just make sure to turn this around so I don't burn one side of that. <laughs> My omelette. You're still cooking, the are you? Yeah, it's taken a while to cook. To cook, I don't know why. It's a, it's a lot quicker at home, but I suppose it's just the wind blowing through. And just this bit of wind blowing through, it's making a big difference. And that's how you set it up. And that there, if you can look over here, you can see the Snow Peak fire pit. So, so we'll have a fire going in that soon. So that fits perfectly around that. Excellent. And then that's the um, drifter fire surround that they make. So I just flip the flip that over, so you can see. I reckon she's looking all right. This is the beauty of these Uniflame. What I'm using is a fry pan from the Uniflame cook set. So you can see how it's how great non-stick coating it is. Look at that, just a bit of a shake. That just shows. So that's cooking on the other side now. So that won't be too long before that's ready. Once I get one of these lit, I'll get a better one. <laughs> you can see what Steve is using here. Uh, I've got a better one there than this one. Have you? Yeah. I just use this one because it's got a self-ignite. Once I get rid of that one. Ah, I think I have seen the difference between these two. And this is this is the other one. But so you get, so the trick is you get a little fire going here, so you can light the. Oh, 
Oh my god! <laughs> oh my goodness, he's not kidding me. Gee, that scared me then. <laughs> Although that was a big storm coming. This is Luke Sutton bought me this. <laughs> I can, I, no mucking around, Luke. <laughs> we get that fire going. Almost as quick as the time when I tried starting a fire with shallite. And that's how you start a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. Hey, good morning all. I had a fairly good sleep last night as soon as I went into bed. I uh, dozed off straight away. After Steve and Annie went to bed last night, I sat down under the Drifter Stockton Hexatarp here in my little Helinox chair here and uh, listened to the rain falling on the tarp. Didn't get very heavy, but it was still, still nice to hear the pitter patter of rain and staying nice and dry. That's awesome. Got my little puff light here. To be honest, it's the first time I, last night, it's the first time I turned it on this year. <laughs> So I should get that out and start using it more often. Just about to have brekkie, pack up shortly and head back home and upload this footage onto YouTube and hopefully works out pretty good. My next door neighbour has packed up and left early this morning. Stephen and Annie is the first still here. But I thought what I'll do is we'll take you a little bit of a look at the campsite here and I'll tell you, show you some of the sites. So with Norval Park, when you book, you can go to the Bundaberg Information Centre and book there or you can book online if you go to the Bundaberg Council website. But the easiest way to find it is just do a search on Google for Norval Park Campground and it'll take you to one of the first links it'll take you to the link to where you can book this so when you first arrive you'll see this sign here okay so this sign and I'll show you this if you look there it shows you all the numbered campsites so what you do is you choose which site you pick. So what I'll do now to help you decide which site to pick, is we'll go through and have a look at the sites. So it starts, number one's over there. Okay. Now, not all these sites have got a lot of shade. Number one, as you can see, it's a nice flat area. And it's got a fair bit of the morning shade. So right now it's almost 10 a.m. in the morning. And, but you'll have no shade in the afternoon. But if you've got external solar panels, you can put them way out near the road here and you should be able to pick up some sun for a little while. It's got this awesome little fireplace here that someone's built up. So check that out. So that's number one. Okay. And then we'll go on this side. And you've got number two over here. So that's got more shade. And not as flat. Nice big campsites though. And then we come over here. We've got number three. So in that one's got a nice little fire spot there that someone said. Again, it's not very flat, not too bad. Got number four here. So this is campsite number five where I am now. Now my setup is overhanging into campsite number four. But that's not a problem here because of the COVID rules at the moment. They've only, you can only book the odd numbers. Okay, the even numbers you can't book, so it's half capacity here at the moment. And you've got campsite number six. Now, campsite number six is pretty much in shade most of the time. 
okay as well as camp no site number five as you can see there the amount of shade and you got number seven up here not very level ground nice big area quite a lot of shade still a great spot and then you got campsite number eight in here campsite eight looks pretty good reasonably level as you can see plenty of shade uh, plenty of sunlight I should say so all these campsites from now on from this side onwards are ideal for those with your solar panels so you've got campsite number nine okay so it's campsite number nine actually starts from where these rocks are and goes right through here and that's where Stephen and Enya is in right now campsite number nine Oh, Stephen's in the shower. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> How's that for timing? <laughs> so that, that that's actually brings me to a point. You want to bring your showers here because there's no showers here. There are flushing toilets. Okay, so they're not holes in the ground. They are, you actually do flush these toilets, which is awesome. And then we've got the next one is campsite number 10. Campsite number 10 is in a really nice open area, uh, close to the toilet. Uh, but the ground doesn't look very level to me. It's quite, it's got a bit of a slope downwards. So not the ideal. And then last of the campsites we'll have a look at now is number 11, which I think is probably the, one of the worst of all the campsites because look at the slope on that. Apart from that, so it all depends if you want solar panel or not. Uh, campsite number one will work for solar panels. Number two will work pretty well for solar panels, but it's not as level ground as campsite one. And campsite number eight looks good for solar panels as well as well as campsite number nine so they're probably the pick if you can try to get those Uh, graded on a regular basis 
So they need to bring everything here, including water. There's no water there that you can use, so make sure you bring your water. The toilets you're fine with. They had plenty of toilet paper there in the toilets, but it wouldn't hurt to bring your own toilet paper just in case. If you arrive there and there's no toilet paper left. So, nice little beach there. Go for a drive. You can actually take your four drive down onto the beach and go for a drive. So, once again, thank you. Thank you for watching my video. Very much appreciate it, particularly if you watch it right through to the end. And if you can help my channel out by if you can subscribe, I really appreciate that. Uh, makes it a lot easier for me to be able to start uploading more videos and if I can crack that thousand subscription or above I'll be able to then start doing some live feeds from some of the campgrounds etc so that'll be awesome so I'm looking forward to that so until then uh, thanks for watching and look after yourself get out there in the great outdoors do the right thing respect the bush take all the rubbish back home with you get yourself a couple of the respect the bush bags i've got some uh, coming out with uh, me on the sponsorship as you've noticed so i've got four bags with me here and uh, i'm happy to say i didn't have to use any of them the uh, campsite was uh, very clean uh, we only found one little bit of rubbish along the beach that Stephen picked up. Some plastic that was washed up. Looks like it might have washed up from one of the cargo ships. So we picked that up and put it in one of the bags. Uh, apart from that, there's no other rubbish there. So people are doing the right things there. And, it, and they're probably a part of that. The main reason for that would be also there's a big skip bin there. So great on for the Bundaberg City Council to to do that to put a skip bin in so it's no excuse to have uh, leave any rubbish behind absolutely well there's never any excuse to leave any rubbish behind what you take in there's no reason why you can't take it out so even if there's no bins no skip bins you do not leave rubbish behind it's, it's just as simple as that guys do the right thing and you won't get these beautiful places like this closed down if you reckon that campsite we're at is really nice you should have seen the places I used to be able to go to a lot better than that magic magic absolutely magic spots they can't even access it can't even walk in there anymore so yeah so do the right thing guys respect the bush just about hit the uh, bitumen road now I've only got a short drive to go back home according to this 46 kilometers and I'm back home so until next time look after yourself and cheers thanks for watching